Now that we've been dealing with place value and expanded form, we can deal with the, some of the issues that we have with that and we can go to a stack. Our next strategy is the stack. Um, we can take the number again, 207.94. And we can say that we're gonna add it to 20.07. Um, again, we're gonna do a stack, but to start off, let's just make sure that we can do our uh, expanded form. Um, we have our two, which makes it 200. We have no tens here, but I have to actually represent it. And this is where a lot of kids just ignore it. They would put a seven here. But if we don't put this tens place and account for it, we are gonna lose our place value when we add across. Um, we have our sevens, nine, and four hundreds, twenty. Now the first number here is a twenty, and natural instinct is to just write it down and expand our number out. But we can see that across from us right here, this is our hundreds. So do we have any hundreds over here? We don't. Um, and just so that we don't lose anything, we're going to put zeros there just to keep that place value working. This time we do have our tens. We have no ones, but we have to account for it just to keep our place value working straight across. Again with our tenths, but finally our hundredths, so we do have something. And again, so we added across, 200 plus zero is equal to 200. We have our 20, oops, got to keep my decimals going as well. We have our seven, our nine tenths, and 11 hundredths, which would be 11, starting in the hundredths place. Again, we add it up, carry the one, comes an eight, a two, and a two. That was what we did last time. Now, we're gonna do the exact same equation, but we're just gonna do the stacking. And to stack it up, we would write down the two, zero, seven, decimal nine, four, but to stack it, we have to line things up. The best thing about decimals is it always gives us an orientation point. We always know that we have to put the decimal above the decimal. So I'll start by putting the decimal right here. And now my number is 2007. So here's my 2007. But you have to keep this place value. And again, it seems kind of rudimentary. This is the old fashioned way of doing it. But unless you understand why we're lining it up, numbers can often get moved around, much like we can see how it would have happened if we ignored this place value up here, if we ignored this place value here. So 4 plus 7 is equal to 11. Carry the 1. Hey, that's exactly what we did over here. 9 plus 1 is 10. Carry the 1. Times an 8, a 2, and a 2. We end up with the exact same number but it's two different ways of going about it. This strategy is a pictorial representation of the equation. This one is the standard algorithm or the symbolic representation. Oh, I said that we need to keep track of these things and this is where I'm going to, um, right down in this bottom corner, I'm gonna show you how not to do it. <laughs> do not do it this way. So if I was to take the number one more time, 207.94, and I'm adding it to 20.07. The natural instinct, as I said before, was to just only do the digits that are there, and this is why it doesn't work. I'm only accounting for the digits that are here. And if I was to do that, I'm not really adding up the place values because kids will look at the two and the two and they'll put down uh, this equals 400 because I started off in the hundreds. And that's not quite what we need to do. And a seven and a seven would be 70794. And they might get this piece okay, but we've already made a big mistake. So this is why when we are doing our place value expanded form, we have to account for each digit that is represented. This had a five digit number, we have to have five going down. And even though this is a four digit number, we need to represent all of the five place values on this side as well. So this is our expanded form. This proves that our symbolic representation works. And we've also proved that it's inappropriate 
to only account for the digits that are there. And that's our next lesson.